Hello everybody, my name is Paul Tace. In this video, we are going to be looking at the new laws that are coming into place for the Mavic Mini and the Mini 2 as of the 1st of January 2021. I'm also going to go over the answers to some questions I've been asked a lot, such as can you fly your Mavic Mini in a town or in a city like London? Also, what's going on where the drone code is contradicting the ASA rules? And uh, we're also going to look at do you need an A2CFC and do you need to register your drone? That's a lot to take in, so let's get started. Okay guys, so that's a lot to take in, and I want to start off by saying I'm not a lawyer, I'm not CAA recognised, I've just been doing a lot of research, I've gone to CAA uh, approved entities uh, such as uh, training schools and asked them, I've actually approached the CAA and asked them a few questions, I'll let you know what happened with that. Um, also, uh, I've just been doing a lot of research, I'm doing the A2CFC myself, so I've collected all this data and I'm going to try to push through all the uh, relevant information that's going to help you know what you need to know. So another thing I want to just mention again is that these rules are coming in from the 1st of January 2021, so until then uh, the law is going to remain the same. Also, the information I've got where it's been picked out from different places, it's not been finalised, so um, it's still subject to change, although I'm pretty sure now we've got a pretty solid picture of what we can do with our minis and our mini too. So what I wanted to do is start off with this table from the CAP 1789, which is on the CAA website, or at least it was. And what this is going to do is show us what category our Mavic Mini falls into. Having said that, as of the 11th of November, they've taken down this lovely table that's really easy to follow, and they've put this onto the CAP722, where they've uh, <laughs> really confused it, mashed it up, and made it a lot harder to recognise. Uh, so thanks for that, the CAA. So what I've done here is I've now got uh, Bob, and Bob's actually my representative from the CAA, and we're going to ask him a few questions, and uh, hopefully he's going to know the answer. So Bob, why have you taken an easy to read table and made it harder to read? Okay, thank you for that. But as the information is pretty much the same, I'm going to use a table from the CAP 1789 to show you exactly uh, where the Mavic Mini falls. So basically if you're a hobbyist, the chances are you're going to be flying under the open category, which is split into different subcategories. Now the A1 category is a really good one for us, and luckily enough, this is where the Mavic Mini falls into. So even though the Mavic Mini is a legacy drone, it's going to fall into the A1 subcategory with less than 250 grams, meaning we can actually fly this drone over uninvolved people. So um, this is a pretty big thing, like you can go to the park and somebody could potentially legally be hovering their drone above your child's head. So um, maybe if you're a bit worried about drones, this isn't a good thing, but if like us, you're a drone flyer, if you're responsible, you can fly safely and you've got a lot more freedom to do so in certain areas. The other thing I wanted to mention is because the Mavic Mini has a camera on it, you do still have to register your drone. This is a really easy process to do. Uh, you just go onto the uh, CAA website and uh, you take your drone test. Uh, all you have to do is answer 20 multiple choice questions. They give you all the answers beforehand. So it's a nice and easy, and from there you get your flyer's ID. Once you've got your flyer's ID, you can then go and apply for an operator's ID. Now when you get the operator's ID, this just basically means you're registering your drone, and this is going to cost £9 for the year. Now this is just going to make sure that um, you understand how what you have to do to keep your drone safe and to maintain it, and the flyer's ID basically allows you to fly it. Now you'll notice that there is no minimum age limit to be flown for the Mavic Mini or the Mini 2. So this basically means that all you have to have to fly this drone is your flyer's ID, and to get that you'll just need your email address and you'll need to pass the test. So anybody capable of passing this test can fly the drone. However, you do have to be over 18 to be the drone operator, so if you have a child that has this, somebody else will need to be the drone operator like yourself, and the child would have to have the flyer's ID to fly it. Okay, so that's a lot to take in. So this basically means all you need to do is get your flyer's ID and your operator's ID by doing the test and registering. You then have to read through the user manual and you're now allowed to go out and fly your drone. Now, as it says, you are allowed to fly your drone over uninvolved people, but you are not allowed to fly your drone over crowds. Uh, now, they don't actually define what a crowd is, which is a real grey spot. <laughs> But basically, a crowd is going to be a group of people, so uh, like if you're flying over a sports game or a concert, this obviously is not allowed, there's a lot of people there. Uh, but a crowd can also be a smaller group of people that aren't paying any attention to the drone. So if we've got a lot of people that are uh, running and jogging with our headphones in, uh, again, they're not going to know your drone's there. So they're going to be seen as a crowd. Or also uh, people that are just like on their phone, if they're just playing Pokemon Go and walking around. If there's a lot of people doing that, again, you shouldn't be flying your drone over these people. 
Now, an uninvolved person doesn't just include a person, it can also be what the person is in. So if that person is in a building, that building becomes an uninvolved person. And if they're in a vehicle or a vessel, uh, that car, aeroplane, bicycle, all become an uninvolved person. And again, uh, the laws have to apply the same way there. So um, if you've got a lot of people driving underneath you on a motorway, you're not gonna be able to fly over them. There's a crowd of uninvolved people. So the information I've got from this is come from the CIA website, and I'm also doing the A2C of C course, uh, where this can be quite clearly seen. Now, now when you're registering, and at the moment when you do the drone code, you're gonna see you have to be 50 meters away from people. And this is gonna be in a dome shape. So um, you've gone out, you've got this drone, you've done this course, it says you have to be 50 meters away from people. And then you go and you look at the CA guidelines and the EASA rules, and it says you're allowed to fly over people, and uh, there's no minimum distance you have to keep away from them. So what's going on? Okay, so let's go back to Bob here. Bob, can you fill us in on this? What I actually did was I wrote an email to the CAA about two weeks ago, and I asked this very question, and I'm still waiting for an answer. So what I decided to do was then try to ring them. After trying to ring them and going through a long process, I managed to get through to the people that register drones, but they didn't know about the drone laws. They recommended I go to the website. But the reason I've come to them is because I've gone to the website and it contradicts what I'm learning through the A to C of C. So then I've asked to speak to someone who actually knew the answers and they're all really busy and they've asked me to send an email, which of course I've already done and it's not been answered. So from there, what I've decided to do is I've rung around a few different CAA approved entities, uh, people that will teach you how to do the A to C of C, and I've asked what's going on. And basically what they've come back and told me is that the, uh, the drone code is going to be changing. They believe it's gonna be around the 14th of December or towards the end of December. The new laws or the drone code is gonna be uh, released for people to see, and we're gonna be able to know exactly what is happening. So I'll try to keep you updated when that happens. So uh, hit that subscribe button if that's something that interests you. But from speaking to different CAA approved entities, what I've come to believe is that in terms of the Mavic Mini, each person's gonna to have to do their own sort of personal risk assessment and they're gonna to have to deem whether it's safe to fly themselves. So if you're in a nice open park, there's no one else around, you can put your Mini up and you know you're gonna be relatively safe to do so and it's very unlikely you're gonna hit a person or damage property. However, if you then go to a city and put this up with loads of people around, there's going to be a lot of risks happening. You're going to have turbulence from the buildings. You're going to have people, cars. Uh, there's a lot of property to damage. So um, this is going to be less safe. So you need to risk assess that and see if it's actually a good idea for you to put your drone up or not. Now, there are going to be other limitations in place, like you have to keep visual line of sight. You're not allowed to go above 120 meters above ground level. You're not going to be allowed to go any further than 500 meters away from yourself. Uh, so whichever is closest, visual line of sight or the 500 meters. And you're not gonna be able to fly in any restricted zones uh, such as a kilometer around airports. So um, there are still restrictions, but they're actually less when it comes to the Mavic Mini and the Mini 2. So I've had a lot of people that have asked me, can we fly our Mavic Mini in a town? They've really had trouble trying to find the answer to that. And at the moment it's all up in the air and there's no solid answer. But my interpretation of this is that if you are in a busy town centre, like a commercial street with lots of people walking around, no you can't, you're over a crowd of people, uh, there's too much going on, and it's potentially too dangerous. But what I would say is that if you're out, and it's maybe early in the morning, late at night, there's not a lot of people around, there's perhaps the option for you to be able to put your drone up without endangering anyone at all, and only having one or two people passing by. And although it's not certain, this may actually be something that would be possible to do with your Mavic Mini, or your Mini 2. Now if we go and look at somewhere like London, obviously it's going to be a lot busier, there's going to be a lot going on. It's going to be really hard to find that situation if it does arise. We've also got to bear in mind there's going to be a lot of restricted zones. Uh, most of central London, if not all of the city of London, is a restricted fly zone, so you won't be able to fly in there at all anyway. Uh, you've also got to bear in mind there's going to be a lot of airports, so it's, it's going to be a bit of a minefield. There may be one or two places that you may possibly be able to find that are out of the way of any of these restriction zones. There's not a lot of people around and you might be able to fly at a time of day that will make this legal. But ultimately, this is going to be something that's very difficult to do. Okay, now another thing I'd like to point out is because these laws haven't come into action, nobody's actually been taken to court for these and nobody's been able to appeal them. So we can't actually look at previous cases and decide what is legal and what isn't. We're going to actually have to wait for someone to go to court and appeal it before we can confirm that this is what you're allowed to do. So although we can have this insight to it, we don't know 100% what is going to be legal and what is not. 
Another thing people have been asking about is the A2C of C and also about commercial use. So um, as I've said already, you don't need to have an A2C of C to fly Mavic Mini. The conditions where you would need that is if you put a payload on it and this pushes it over the 250 grams. This is going to push you into the A1 transitional subcategory if you want to fly near people, which is going to then mean that you have to have an A2C of C. This means we're not going to be able to intentionally fly over uninvolved people, but I guess if you do it by accident, that's perfectly legal. So it's a bit of a strange or a bit of a grey area, but um, again, if you want to add a payload to your Mavic Mini, you will need an A2 CFC to fly it legally. Now, again, a lot of people have been asking about commercial use. Um, there is going to be no commercial licenses. I've been asked how I know this. I've done the A2 CFC course, and again, I've been in contact with different A2, um, and I've been in contact with different CAA approved entities, and they can all confirm there is going to be uh, no commercial license needed. However, um, if you do want to fly commercially, it will be a legal requirement for you to have your drone insured. Now to get your drone insured, at the moment, it's looking like you're gonna need your A2 CFC. So uh, it's a bit of a weird one. Although you won't need your A2 CFC to fly commercially by law, you will need to have it insured. So to have it insured, you're gonna need your A2 CFC. So to me, what this looks like is if you want to fly your uh, Mavic Mini or your Mini 2 commercially, having the A2 CFC will help you get insured, which will then mean you can fly legally. Okay, so is there any other benefit of having your A2C of C if you don't want to fly commercially and you don't want to put a payload on your Mavic Mini? In my opinion, uh, yes there is. It's going to give you a deeper insight on how to fly your drone safely. So if you're completely new to drones, you've gone out and you've got your Mavic Mini or your Mini 2 and you want to go out and fly it, um, it's just going to help you be aware of uh, what sort of temperatures you can fly at, um, how to store the batteries, how to keep the batteries safe, um, what the wind can do, uh, what different weather conditions can do. You have to bear in mind uh, what the outer space conditions are, if there's going to be any solar flares that are going to affect the satellites that are tracking your drone. Uh, there's a lot to take in from that respect and also it's going to help you understand the laws and where the weather restriction zones are and where you can and cannot fly. So again, even if it's not 100% necessary for you, it may still be useful now, I personally have been doing the A2C of C with a company called iRed Academy. Um, I'll drop a link in the description down below. And I've actually managed to get the A2C of C course for £145. Everywhere else I've looked, it's been 240 Now, I'm not affiliated with them and I don't get anything from uh, recommending them. But um, if you do, they've been a good company to me and they're substantially cheaper than other places I've looked. Um, again, I haven't done the course with other people, so I don't know how much better they would be or if they are at all. So um, I just thought I'd leave that option out there for you to have a look if that's something you are interested in. Okay guys, so um, that's pretty much going to sum up all the laws. Maybe let's now let's look at a few scenarios. Um, I had a man that commented before who said he wanted to get a drone for his son to do school projects with. He put, some videos seem to suggest even launching a drone in a quiet area of a park or a public field could draw complaints or even worse, get your collar felt by the law. All I want to say about that is um, I obviously don't recommend you break the law, but as, I think as long as you're being safe and as long as you're being sensible, you're not going to have a huge problem. There have been people that have done stupid things like fly their drone in a congested area and they've put it on a Facebook group in front of 30,000 people. And uh, when the police have heard that, they've gone to them and told them not to do it again. So um, I'm not saying it's a good idea to do that. I'm just saying that if you're flying in a park and you're flying safely, I don't think the police are going to be too worried about you doing that. Now, if we look at someone like myself, um, I've just got the YouTube channel and I do a lot of videography. Having a drone I can use commercially will be a huge gain to me. So for me, doing the A2 CFC is a really good idea. Um, it's going to give me uh, more uh, respectability within the industry. And it also gives me some security, uh, me knowing the law a bit better and knowing how to safely fly my drone. Now, if you personally just want to fly recreationally in uh, places where there's not a lot of people around, uh, there's no point you get in the A2 CFC other than just having that security in mind and knowing what you're doing. Okay, guys, so I hope that's all clear and it helps you understand uh, the situation better. Um, I'd also like to point out these things are subject to change. They have not been finalized yet and uh, there will likely be some small details that will change before this all comes out and is officially published. But I do believe this means you will be able to fly your Mavic Mini in an open space over people and with no minimum distance. Um, and I don't think that's going to change. And all you'll have to do to do that is register and read the user manual. Which uh, from a drone perspective is really great. But if you're going out with your children, maybe this isn't such a great thing. Having said that, I do believe most of the people that are flying drones, vast majority, are going to be really responsible.
Okay guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it up there. If you do have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section down below. I do my best to go through all of them. Um, if you ask your own question rather than add it onto someone else's, I'm more likely to find you and more likely to reply to it. That's it for this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.